Welcome back to our Minecraft Sandblock Drop, where we have a pretty good parabola for the vertical position versus time. Last time, we took a look at how we can get the acceleration of the sandblock from the position graph, the velocity graph, and the acceleration graph. Today, what I want to look at is how we can get more quantities out of this, because there's lots of neat stuff that you can get on the drop down menu by default. Um, we've previously in a video looked at the momentum, of course the momentum is gonna follow the same path as the velocity graph, it's just multiplied by the mass. I've entered one kilogram for the mass of the sand block. The, the actual mass for this demonstration doesn't really matter. Um, when you're doing an actual experiment in the real world, you'll obviously wanna get an accurate value for the mass, but for what I wanna to demonstrate today, this actually uh, doesn't, uh, is not going to have an impact. Um, another thing we can get is the kinetic energy, right? This one half mv squared. This is the energy stored in the motion of the sand block. Um, and so what you can see is that it increases. It's going up like the square of the velocity. So it starts out with one rate of change here. It's changing faster up here. Again, there's a little bit of glitchiness here just because of the way that Tracker has to go from the position to the velocity and then squaring the velocity to get here. But if you've been in a physics class for more than about a month, you probably know that kinetic energy is not the only kind of energy. There's also potential energy. And you might notice that there's no potential energy located in this list. The reason for that is that there's a bunch of different kinds of potential energy, right? There's the gravitational potential energy in space. There's the approximate gravitational potential energy near the surface of the Earth. There's electrical potential energy. There is spring potential energy. Basically, for any conservative force you have, there is some kind of potential energy that you can define. So rather than pre-build all of those in, Tracker lets you define those. So the way you can get a graph of potential energy is simply click on the vertical axis label here, go all the way down to the bottom, past all the selectable options, and go down here to define. So you're gonna click on define. You've seen this screen before. This is where we define the mass of the block uh, earlier. Uh, so here we have the mass of the block. Uh, that's the only variable that is pre-built into a point mass is the mass of the of the object. What we want to do is add a new quantity to represent the potential energy. And that's going to be a data function because the potential energy is a function of the height. It's a function of this vertical position. And so we need to go down here to data functions and click on add. That's gonna bring up a new line here with a name and an expression. The name, you can name it anything you want, just double click in here. I'm gonna call it PE for potential energy, and I'll hit enter. So now we have a new data function called PE. When we're done here, that's gonna appear over here on the list of options uh, uh, on the vertical axis. And now what I need to do is input an expression. The expression defaults to zero so that you can you know, have something in there. Again, I'm going to double click in here, and this is where I can access all of the variables that Tracker already has definitions for. Mass, time, x position, y position, position magnitude, position angle, uh, velocity components, velocity magnitude, velocity angle, etc. Everything we've worked with so far is already in this list. And actually, here's something I hadn't noticed before. Let's click here to drag and adjust. Okay, cool, so I can actually click on this to slide the number up and down. That's pretty cool. But I'm not interested in doing that. What I want to do is get the equation for potential energy. Now we're near the surface of the Earth, or near the surface of Minecraftia. I don't know, what do you call the, the world where Minecraft takes place? So when you're near the surface of the Earth, the gravitational potential energy is the mass times the gravitational field. Uh, we previously found that to be 10 in the last video. So this is the acceleration due to gravity. So on Earth it's 9.8, in Minecraftia it is 10, and then we multiply by the height. So that's gonna be this Y coordinate right here. So I've got MGY, just like you have in your physics textbook. Uh, we're gonna hit enter. And so here we go, I've got my potential energy uh, defined as MGY. And you know what, just for completeness, let's call this potential energy grav for gravitational. Um, yeah, that's fine. Names cannot contain spaces or operators. Okay, that's fine. Uh, just because if we had a spring in the problem, we have to call it PE grav and PE spring. 
So here we've got our custom data function, gravitational potential energy, MGY. Uh, that is uh, uh, recorded in here, so we're gonna click on close. And now when I go to my list, when I click on this, I've got an additional option below K, I've got PE graphs. So when I click on that, I have a graph of the potential energy. Now, as you might expect, the potential energy decreases over time as the sand block drops because the height is decreasing. So there's less potential energy between the sand block and the planet down here. And so we end up with this parabola. It looks a lot like the graph for the Y coordinate, which makes sense because this is just M times G times Y. M and G are constant, so this is just gonna follow the same shape as Y. It's just gonna have different units here on the vertical axis. The real power in this comes from my ability to now define the total energy. So when you have kinetic energy and potential energy, uh, you can examine what we call the total energy because for a system with no energy losses, meaning there's no friction, no air resistance, etc., and it looks like there's no air resistance here, um, then you should have the total energy kept constant or total energy should be conserved. So we're going to define another quantity. I'm going to click on define here. I'm going to go down to data functions, we're going to click on add again, and we'll double click on the name here. We're going to call this one E tote for E to I might just call it E total. No sense in not giving it a name that makes sense. And now when I go to the expression here, I want this to be the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So when I double click on this, it's actually neat because I can access the kinetic energy easily. So I can say K, not zero K, K, there we go, plus and then I can access the PE graph that I've already defined. This is what's really neat about this. Once I've defined PE graph up here, it enters this list. And so I can just click on PE graph here and get kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy. And I don't have to enter in the whole MGY business again, which is useful if you end up doing this with data from, uh, from space and you need the whole you know, negative G M1, M2 over R, then you don't need to have uh, then you don't have to re-enter that again. You can just say the potential energy variable name here, which is really cool. All right, so let's click on close here. We're gonna look at the E total. So if we have no losses, and if Minecraft is, is simulating physics well, then this should be relatively constant. And when I look at my graph here, I see that it's roughly constant. There's a little bit of wiggliness here toward the end. Again, we've got some issues with the uh, video capture. We've got you know some issues with the calculations, etc. But this energy is pretty consistent, you know, except for a little bit of variation. Uh, we've got a pretty consistent about 250 joules in the system that's being transferred between the uh, potential energy and the kinetic energy. So what you've got right here is conservation of energy in Minecraft. Now, if you do have a video where you're expecting some kind of energy loss, like for example, say you're, you're dropping a stack of coffee filters and you want to study the drag force, then you should expect to see the total energy decrease. Uh, if you ever see the total energy increase, um, double check your uh, double check your your, your video or, or your calculations there, because uh, total energy generally shouldn't increase unless you've got some kind of engine on the thing that you're working with. So that's a quick look at how you can make customized variables for yourself to graph here in Tracker. I hope that's useful to you. Next time we'll take a look at uh, how you can use customized functions to fit your data. Maybe you don't have a line or a parabola. Maybe you've got something like a sine wave that isn't pre-built into Tracker. We'll take a look how to customize the data fits. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.